Jo crec que em limitaré a dir que avui serà un panel, una discussió que anirà de creixement econòmic. China's economy has been growing very rapidly over the last 35 years. Since 1978 to now, the average growth rate was just below 10% on an annual basis. Then the puzzle is, how can you achieve such economic growth given the lack of good institutions. And today I would like to share with you some of the stories uh, that uh, I have observed in the course of China's economic growth. Hopefully through those stories, uh, we can see some clues to the question uh, that I just uh, posed. An entrepreneur, everybody knows you have to have the help of the local government. If you join a discussion of economists in China, most of the time, 90% of the time, you will hear people discussing all kinds of problems. You will become very pessimistic after you hear all those discussions. Starting a business is very difficult. Uh, we are ranked 151st place. And dealing with construction permit is even more difficult. We are almost ranked at the very bottom. It's an automaker. Um, as you know, China didn't have an auto industry for very long. And uh, most of the firms, most of the cars running on Chinese streets are foreign brands. To sell automobiles in the Chinese market, you have to have central government approval. Local government forced all the local taxi drivers to purchase from this plant. Well, that's within their power. Uh, they, they, they did that. But this is another story that had no government role behind it. So if they, if they are attractive enough to you, you send them a message, then they may reply, they may not. Uh, there are some chances that they, they will. I don't know how much uh, damage it does to marriage in China, but uh, <laughs> it's really successful commercially. WhatsApp makes one US dollars a year from each customer they have. And there was an estimate that uh, Tencent makes seven US dollars a year. On the same day, the spokesperson for this firm told the official Tsinghua News Agency that they would never charge a fee for basic services from their customers. Actually, the internet business in China is almost completely dominated by private firms. So um, if we have any takeaways from these stories, I would like to, to summarize them. Maybe not perfect, uh, I, I, I would welcome comments. First of all, formal property rights protection is really poor. Um, there are laws, but the enforcement of laws are not so strict, and no one can cha challenge the government. There is no constitutional court in China. The local government can use the capacity to help you. It can also use the capacity to destroy you. Some countries are experienced growth miracles. The last talk was sort of fascinating about China. Um, and you detrend it, it becomes a level line. Level is healthy growth, doubling every 39 years. During the transition associated with the change in the policy regime, Fast growth, <laughs> slow growth in recession, even recessions. Japan lost a decade of growth in the 92 to 2002. Well, Spain and the U.S. were in the same club. The U.S. is doing lousy. By the way, there's a really simple way to eliminate U.S. capital income tax. Just make savings not part of taxable income. It turns out that with these reforms, people allocate more time to the market activities and less to non-market. Economic problems are political. Well, my conclusion, it's time for the Spanish and American people to agree to a good policy regime change. And, and growth rates are interesting because they take you from one level of production per person to another. The only country that's really gaining impressively is during this period is, is Japan. And, and Jap this is in a period where the rest of Asia was not growing at all. But the, in, b between 1950 and 1970, you had this tremendous compression. 
And why did this happen? A huge factor was just freedom, democracy. Uh, another factor was free trade. The European common market was a fabulous and huge improvement over the way Europe was run in the first part of this century. So the kind of numbers you're seeing, and we've seen in Asia and are seeing now in China, there's nothing like it ever happened in the UK and the United States, and nothing like that ever will happen unless we you know, destroy our economy and let it come back up. And here's China, many, many thousands of dollars poorer in terms of living standards than, than any country on this picture, but growing faster than every, any country in this, in this picture. Now, back in the 1960s, the, the miracle economy was Japan. And everyone was, in the United States was talking about the Japan, Japanese is the wave of the future, they're gonna be the richest, they're gonna bypass us. Uh, so so, so this, this Japanese miracle was in no sense at the expense of the U.S. The U.S. got huge benefits for, from the prosperous Japan. And see that Japan joined the group of su successful economies. I don't believe they'll, they'll ever leave it. They'll move around within it. Uh, but they're never going to leave us in. We don't leave each other in, in the dust in, the, in, the, in, these, in these worlds. <clears throat> So can, you know, one concern is can we keep this two, can, is this 2% maintainable forever? Or 1.85, you know, who knows, right? So some people are pessimistic, some are optimistic. But in terms of actual lives, improvement of lives of actual people, what this says is that in 2050, uh, <coughs> the Chinese living standards will be about the same as U.S. living standards today. What, what we're experiencing here is, is, are the final phases, in some sense, of the, of the Industrial Revolution. I, I think that black line is going to end up meeting the, 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 uh, the, the, the purple line, that the relative standings of, of European and non-European people are going to get closer and closer together. Uh, but, but the in inequalities in the sense of differences in different uh, countries will, will, will be reduced to something like the differences we have within the club of wealthy countries in Europe and, and North America and Japan today.